Hi, my name is Rakesh Suryavanshi and I am a technical architect who works in Azure and today I'll be presenting the role based axis control which is RBAC. How do we define the permissions with the help of RBAC in Azure? Let's begin now. First of all, let's understand what is role based axis control which is RBAC and how it helps you to manage permissions in Azure. So as the definitions or the name stands role based access control, it allows you basically to define a permission for a resource on a basis of which you can specify what a particular resource is allowed for for example if i as an developer wants to access to a particular resource in azure let's say a sql database then what level of access you would like to give to a database resource to a developer do you want to give the administrator level permissions or you want to give the read access permission to a specific database or do you want to allow deleting the database specifically because it could be a mission critical data which is a really critical data for your production application so do want to have the permission granted to your developers obviously not so how do you manage that level of permission to those risk critical resources and it's not only applicable for the databases but it could be any resource let's say virtual network ip addresses or any any other resource type basically which is available in azure so let's see how the permissions in azure works so if you go to the subscription like currently i am in on my personal subscription and within the subscription you would see options called resource provider so resource provider basically in azure subscription resource provider help you to manage different resources for example if you enable a specific provider then the resources available within that provider in that particular provider would be you would be able to manage those resources so in any azure resources you would have two type of services one is the management plan and the other one is the data plan so before we discuss the rbac first of all we need to understand what is management and the data plan means so within the provider you have two plans management and the data for example if i choose let's say network provider so within the microsoft network block whatever number of resources it will it will be there in that particular resource or the collection of resource type there will be two different plans one is the management plan so basically management plan helps you to manage the resources when i say manage the resources it could be read and write both for example create a, a resource or a delete or resource something like that and whereas the data plan comes into the data part of that particular resource for example reading and writing content to a blob within the blob storage whereas managing the storage account itself such as a storage account keys or a storage account read write permissions and things like that comes into the management plan so each and every resource in azure has two different plans so when you assign permission to any resource or when you define a role for any specific role type uh, any any specific resource then you need to consider these two things one is the management plan and so the second one is the data plan so you need to define the actions for each of the plan for management and for the data plan as well for example 
if I go to the Azure subscription and here let's say you have the appropriate permission to manage the RBAC permission like I have it on my subscription and I would like to see the roles available within the subscription so you go to the roles and here at this particular screen you will see all the available role for this subscription which is applicable is here you can find it here you can also go and check the link available here and here you will find all the built-in rules roles provided by Microsoft Azure now I have used the term built-in roles what does it mean so in Azure Microsoft has provided certain predefined roles and they have also given a option to create your own role as well so the roles which has been defined by Microsoft there are thousand of them you can see the list as number of roles are already available so the roles which are provided by Microsoft they are calling it as a built-in role and on top of that you can specify your own set of roles right so now whether it is a built-in role or a particular roles which you are creating I mean the custom role right each role has a predefined template which you need to fill in in order to make your own role or in order to you know if you want to read the built-in role then there is a predefined template which a role should define in for example if I go to the definition of all the built-in roles available so this is a built-in role available this is the list of built-in roles available so if I go to the defi role definition for any of the role for example you can see that each and every role is having a list of four different sections one is the action section not action section data actions and not data action so in the beginning i have mentioned that a resource provider contains two different types of access level one is the management plane and the data plane so the actions and not actions basically is the comes under the management plane so what things you would like to perform from the management point of view comes under the action section what things you don't want to perform for, from the management point of view in a management plane that things comes under not action plan and similarly from the what level of action actions you would like to perform from the data read and write perspective or management of your data perspective that comes under data and similarly what do you don't want to perform is no, comes under the not data action so now if i open any of the role let's say if i say virtual machine machine contributor so if i open that particular role then you would see all the four sections so for example this is the action section which is the management plane it says that the it can perform these certain number of operations so anybody who has who will have a virtual machine contributor access they would be able to perform these many number of actions within their role right this is the management action and not action it is none of them is specified so whatever it is specified here they would be able to perform all, all of them and nothing is been blocked at the moment not data actions in the virtual machine contributor side you would not be able to actually uh, from the data plan point of view there is no action specified here but if you go to any other role for example let's say if I open this storage account storage blob contributor some yeah blob data contributor then you have the actions 
like this delete action read action write action and then you also has the option to delete a blob read a list of blob write a blob things like that right so this is what the difference is between action in the data action point of view i hope this is clear now in the r back you are allowing certain permissions for your azure resources so the permissions is basically defined on a particular service principle criteria so you assign basically a permission on a role for example you assign a permission to a user group of users or you assign a permission to service principle the service principle i hope you know service principle you service principle you create a uh, the system user like in windows we used to create a system defined user similarly in azure direct you create a same system user you call it as service principle so you assign the uh, access to either service principle created in azure active directory or you assign a role to the manage identity it could be system manage identity or it could be the user manage identity so these are the four different areas where you specify the permissions to so if i go back to my azure portal here in the azure portal you see that each and every role has a permission specified to a specific service a, a user principle section so either this particular let's say if if we refer about this particular role type which is a contributor role this role has been assigned to none of the users, none of the user group, but it has been assigned to 13 different service principles, right? So this is how the assignment of a role has been, you know, assigned to this user principle criteria. So you can only specify the certain role to these particular things, right? Management group can have collection of management group or a subscription collection of subscription so let's say here in this diagram i have a management group and within the management group i have a subscription by the way you need to enable this particular service which is called management group by default when you have a subscription this management group is not enabled so if you would like to manage your subscription with the help of management group then that's where you may like to enable this particular service so as i was saying you could have multiple subscription within the management group and then within the subscription as we know that we can have one or more resource group and the resource group is obviously a collection of resources wherein you can specify all the different different types of resources available in azure now the point of discussion here is you specify the RBAC permissions or the access management permissions, identity access management permissions to either of these section. Either you specify a certain roles to the entire management group or you specify the permissions to any specific subscriptions you, or you specify permissions to resource or a resource group. So you need to be very very decisive about your approach how do you want to define your own permissions roles and how do you like to assign those permissions at which level now let's say i'm on my axis control and here is the role i would like to see so let's say you would like to see a virtual machine contributor will take a look at the network contributor for example so if i go to the network contributor select permissions from here if i click here on the permission section you'll see that there are in that particular role which is a network contributor i have these many resource provider included so remember in the beginning of the discussion i have mentioned about the resource provider so a role 
contains the list of resource provider which it is going to impact and within the row a specific resource provider if i click on the specific resource provider then you will see the resources list of resources which on which this role is going to have impact and what permissions that particular role will have on each and every resource for example on a network contributor i have selected a network microsoft network provider block and within the network provider block you can see that i have number of resources such as the application gateway so how many different permissions of the application gateway is read write delete and some other permission we'll check that what these other permissions mean but before we go ahead you can check that there are other network type of resources are also available like a application security group bastion host ddos protections uh, all of them all the network resources basically azure firewall policies load balancer load balancer local applic local uh, application gateway private dns zone private network virtual private network link express route and everything basically route tables right so if i if you see the virtual network you have the permission as in read permission write permission and then delete permission and you also have some custom extend permissions or the other permission which they are calling so if i click on this particular resource type uh, so here you'll see that the list of all the available permission applicable by this role which is this particular role network contributor role on this resource for example on this particular resource which is network virtual network resource network contributor role would have these many permission read permission write permission delete permission and there will be some other action available which means that you would be able to get best in host associated to the virtual network it means you can associate you can attach the best in host to virtual network you can join a virtual network you can join a load balancer to virtual network peer the other virtual networks with this particular virtual network you can release the private ip address to the load balancer and update the private ip address in a virtual network for internal load balancer things like that so these are the list of other action i which is associated for this particular role which you can find it here so if you would like to know more about any of this specific role you can go ahead and check that particular role now you can mouse over to individual role and you will see the more detail around it for example i'm i'm mouse hovering it here and i'm getting the more help around it or uh, some some uh, action around it which says that peer a virtual network with another virtual network things like that so this is how you get to know about a specific role obviously you have the full help available here in microsoft documentation right now next thing is how do you assign the permissions to the to the subscription to the resource group or individual resource for example let's say in my organization i have a resource called krishna and i would like to assign assign krishna as a network contributor because he is my network administrator so i can go to the subscription if i think that any network resource available in that particular subscription i would like him to manage all my network resource resources then what i can do is i can go to the role assignment and then add a role and in this case i will say network administrator network contributor not administrator and then use obviously in this case user group or service principal so i am going to select krishna for this case so this is a user krishna here i'll select save and as soon as i save it the any network resources available within this particular virtual net uh, within this subscription the this role which i have assigned to krishna will be inherited from subscription 
to that particular resource for example you can see krishna has got now this network contributor access so now let's say in this subscription if i go and create a virtual network let's quickly create a virtual network and the resource is created now if i go to the access control and if i navigate to the role assignment you will see that uh, krishna automatically got the role assignment and you can see that the role has been inherited from subscription right because i have given the permission on the subscription level so any resources within the, that particular subscription the resource has got the permission uh that that permission as well. now let's take a look at about some of the limitations available in the rbec section you might have observed one of the limitation while i was performing the roles assignment for my azure subscription there are only 2000 roles assignment permitted for a specific subscription so if you have one subscription and within that subscription only 2000 role assignment is permitted that's all about this topic role based access permission i hope you learned something out of this session if you like this topic like the content please give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel and don't forget to share with your circle with your friends thanks for watching it see you next time in the next interesting topic